welcome into the ONTV Fantasy Football League podcast. We've made it to the playoffs. Eight teams enter. Only one will win. <laughs> Three weeks to go. Uh, I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and with me again in studio is Joe Johnson. While he's on vacation, not Zoom called, um, and we're in the studio. Season's over, regular season, and now we've gotten to the playoffs. Joe, how you feeling? Are it you is ready? a glorious day, Joey. My team <laughs> is firing on all cylinders. Last week, my team put up my highest point total of the entire season uh, the week before. This past weekend, I led the league in scoring for the first time this season. So if you need a team to just be hitting in stride with the playoffs looming, I am very happy with my team <laughs> that they're like, bring it on. Let's do this. Yeah. Well, let's jump right into it then. We'll we'll show off your your team, your highlights. Um, you beat Tracy's team one thirty seven point six two. You beat out Ian by almost a point for top team of the week. And uh, yeah, like you said, your team has continued to look good. I finally, I finally will admit, I was wrong about Brock Purdy. <laughs> He's a better fantasy quarterback than Patrick Mahomes. He has been, especially over the last few weeks. And, yeah, I uh, think the last few weeks have definitely solidified it. Earlier in the year, it was kind of a lot more back and forth. But uh, just the way the Chiefs have looked lately, I, I would trust Purdy a lot more um, going forward. Plus, you have the Debo stack. I would I would rather play that than a single Mahomes, I guess. Debo has just – he's doing what I expected him to do on draft day. He's – I drafted him for this reason that he can be an explosive player. Uh, these last two weeks, he's scored what five touchdowns yeah. for the last two weeks. This past week, 149 receiving yards with seven receptions and a rushing t- TD. That's what's exciting too. Is sometimes he catches TDs and sometimes they'll just give him the end around and he takes it in for the score. So you never know how this guy's going to score from week to week. So having Purdy throwing passes to Debo, uh, I'm just really excited heading into the playoffs. Yeah, plus last week you got both of your running backs going. Well, three of your running backs, now that Kyron Williams has solidified himself as a a top 12 running back, maybe even top five considerably. Plus Jameer Gibbs got into the end zone. B. John Robinson got into the end zone. Um they didn't get as much yardage done, but just getting into the end zone uh, gave them a big week. So, yeah, your your team is peaking at the right time. Exactly. And even though it's a pass-happy league, I really still think the foundation of any fantasy team is running backs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I drafted Gibbs and Bijan Robinson. And uh, Gibbs is a little on the downside, but I'm hoping he's going to have a big week this week. Um, but Bijan's been scoring, and then with – Kyron coming off of IR, he's just added another uh, layer to my team. Um, my receivers have been playing well. Uh, Addison, though, I'm a little concerned about the situation in Minnesota. Uh, Addison is now facing a, uh, I don't know if it's a second or third string quarterback, depending on how you look at it. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm, I don't feel real good about Minnesota right now. So, uh, he only scored four points last week, so I'm, I hate to do this because they say, you know, go with your studs. Um, but I'm benching Addison, and I picked up uh, OBJ off the waivers. He's been playing really, really well, like the OBJ of, of old, and yep. he's going to get the start this week. So uh, And Baltimore, because I have Lamar Jackson in our other league, Baltimore has a favorable playoff schedule in the fact that they play Jacksonville, who will probably push the score up, so they'll have to throw more. Then they play San Francisco, and San Francisco has been really good, so they might be behind in that game, might have to throw again. And then the final week of the season, the fantasy season, I believe they play Miami. So then that's another game that if you make it to the fantasy championship, again, they might have to try to keep up with Miami if they're healthy. So So I guess you can call uh, this past week's game an upset. I mean, Tracy had a better schedule or a better – standings than me um but there weren't really a whole lot of up- upsets in our league across the board yeah. there were plenty of upsets in the nfl which mm-hmm. was absolutely crazy especially the uh, 
dual Monday night games. Yeah. Um, but really, yeah, this past week was really just to set the seating. I moved up one spot from eighth to seventh, um, but it really doesn't matter because the top three teams in our league are powerhouses. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to be facing uh, Sammy and his squad who has beaten me twice this year. So, yeah, uh, it is going to be a bare knuckle brawl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we'll we'll get into that when we look into the, the upcoming week uh, on the other side. Tracy's team is kind of in a weird spot right now. I know she's been struggling with setting her lineup. She has already made a change. She dropped Jared Goff today. Oh, she did. After waivers went through. Uh, she picked up, oh man, I'll have, have to, to click into it, but, uh, she picked up somebody that Jake Browning, that's what it was. I was like somebody that's questionable. Now Jake Browning has played really good for the Bengals, but to have to pick up Jake Browning as your starting quarterback heading option, into the playoffs. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the key. You, you mentioned running backs as being a staple of your fantasy team this year quarterbacks have been a staple because a lot of the top quarterbacks either are not available or just haven't played as well like Patrick Mahomes. And it's going to be crazy. Some of the quarterbacks that we're seeing on Sunday, well, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. I saw, I was, I was watching football or, you know, one of those uh, NFL shows and they had a list of the, the uh, starting quarterbacks that have been lost this season. And it was just (laughs) jaw dropping. Mm -hmm. And that, um, if you were lucky enough to reach the playoffs, uh, you may be starting a backup. That's pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah. So uh, the other matchups on the slate, Ian beat Jordan's team. I was nothing. Uh, Jordan spent the weekend in Chicago for the Lions game, unfortunately. Uh, so he didn't set his lineup or anything. Um, so Ian got the pretty easy win, but we'll get to Ian's struggle that he's going to have to face this week. Um, and then I beat Marie. On the last week of the season, which felt good because she beat me down in our ESPN league. <laughs> what was um, the uh, what was the environment like uh, on well, Sunday in the in the the household? I hate to say, unfortunately, it was all just sleeping through football games. Uh, <laughs> Marie was very sick this weekend, so Aww. we kind of kept our distance for the most part. Um, and so I was up with the dog. So neither of us slept very well all weekend, but she was very sick, so she didn't really watch any football, and I just kind of sat on the couch and watched some football. But uh, I have an issue, too, a quarterback issue. Jordan Love, I thought, was going to come in after playing really good the last couple games, and uh, he just did not look good against the Giants. And he has not. he has a fairly easy matchup um, for the playoffs where he's going to get Tampa Bay, who's a big scoring team, so you'll have to keep up in that game. But I have decided to flip a 180, and I picked up Matthew Stafford last night. That that is not a bad thing. I mean, he's one of the last, and this is so shocking to say about Stafford, but he's one of the few remaining healthy quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, So I am going all in on the Rams. I never thought I would be saying this, but for this upcoming week, I'm going to start Stafford, Cup, and Pukunakua in my starting lineup. And it doesn't feel great, but they're playing the Commanders. Yeah, and Cup seems like he's finally finding his groove. He's caught touchdowns the last two games. Yep. Nakua, he had a spectacular diving grab last weekend. Uh, I do not think there's anything wrong with starting those. Stafford uh, has trust in both of those guys, and he's feeding them the ball equally well. Yeah. Um, I have, obviously, uh, Kyron, and uh, he'll be running the ball, so – I've seen the pundits say that uh, Rams players could be league winners. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes for you. I'm hoping for it because this this past week was a, a big test week for me. I played uh, Devon Achan in my flex spot this week to see how much they would use him now being a second week back. It seems like they're still favoring Mostert, so I'm going to sit Achan and I'm going to go with Ooh. the Rams guys. Um, because I can't sit McCaffrey and Rashad White. So I, I've got a, a plentiful of running backs. So Zeke Elliott and Achan are going to be on my bench this week. And uh, I'm just going to ride it out and hope for the best. Um, Marie's team, you know, she kind of had a down week. Um, she played Alexander Madison, which was questionable. Um, Derrick Henry, I can understand benching him against Miami. Usually when Tennessee is down, they don't use Derrick Henry as much. But he got into the end zone twice. He really didn't do anything else besides the touchdowns. 
So I think her logic was correct in sitting him, but I wasn't know. He, uh, wasn't he hurt last week? Like, I think he played sparingly in the second half last week. Yeah, so. he was banged up. Yeah, and I, I know it's tough to, I mean, and not a lot was riding this past week, so you can mm-hmm. take chances. But yeah, on one hand, you say, gosh, you know, do you ever bench a healthy Henry? But on the other hand, he hasn't been all that healthy. So. Yeah, and now I know she has him in her starting lineup uh, for this week. He's playing Houston. Mm-hmm. which Houston notoriously has been a bad run defense. This year they've actually been much improved. But I think the last three games with Derrick Henry against the Texans, he's averaged 200 rushing yards, something crazy like that. Mm. Um, so can't sit him against Houston just because of the matchup. He could have one of the best playoff matches uh, for the next three weeks. So we'll see how she does um, in the week going forward. Then yeah. we have Malik beating Drake's team. No big deal. Uh, Drake, like we said, basically out of it. Um, And then Sammy took down Becky. This was a big matchup. Sammy had a chance to get the number one seed, but just came up six points short. Oh, wow. He needed to outscore Marie by six more points, and he would have got that top spot. Um, Unfortunately, he didn't. Happy for us. We don't (laughs) have to hear him blabbering about it. (laughs) But now he has to play Joe this week, which will be a fun matchup. Uh, they kind of had a disappointing matchup. They were kind of the game of the week, which is weird to be two powerhouses going into this. Um, Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown struggled heavily against Dallas, and then Tua looked lost without Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill only played. He got a couple snaps early on in the game, got hurt, and then he didn't play until late in the game. So that's a little bit spooky if, uh, if for Becky. If she keeps them in her starting lineup for the first round of the playoffs, I don't know what she's going to get. It, it was yeah. really shocking to see them. Well, yeah, the the injury obviously kept uh, Tyreek off the field. When he did re-enter the game, he, like, changed the dynamic of mm-hmm. that game, and they went up by two scores and, until they gave that up late. Yeah. The but on, uh, the you only, don't know what you're getting. Yeah, and the only concern that I've heard people say is that his straight line speed looked really good when he came back, but it didn't look like he could cut like he usually does. So that could be a concern going into the game. She does have uh, – she has Lamar Jackson on her bench who put up 31 points. So, yeah. Uh, we, I think we got a, a quarterback dilemma this week. Who yep. do you go? Who would you go with this week? Man, it's hard because I'm a, legit, a Lamar Jackson owner myself. Yeah. And I know that when he throws the ball, he can put up a lot of points. But there's been a lot of games where the Ravens have just kind of cruised their wins, and when they cruise, they just kind of run the ball – Lamar doesn't get enough fantasy points. He's a great regular quarterback, but that hurts him in the fantasy aspect. So I don't know. It's it's a tough call. I think I would play Lamar in this just because of matchup. Miami is playing the Jets this week, and the Jets have had Tua's number. I think I saw a stat today that Tua has never thrown more than 250 passing yards against the Jets or something crazy like that. Mm. So And especially if if Tyreek Hill is by somehow ruled out, which there's been talk, that there could be that chance, then I would definitely sit to a and play uh, Lamar Jackson. I'm uh, looking at Drake London on her roster. Someone rattled his cage, man. 29 mm-hmm. points when he's been fairly quiet all season. Yeah. He put up a monster game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting one. She's also going to have to make a decision with Joe Mixon. He's had a couple back-to-back good games. Um, so does he end up uh, the starting lineup for DeAndre Swift? Uh, we finally saw a dud from Mike Evans, which was wild. Yeah, he's been hot. Um, I don't know if I could bench him because of one off week, but it's still tough. Um, and then for Sammy, I mean, Saquon Barkley got two touchdowns in Monday Night Football, which secured him the win. Uh, his team's looking pretty good for the most part. I think Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown will bounce back no problem. The only thing he's going to have to worry about is Keenan Allen. He's had a heel injury. He sat out the first two days of practice. Today will be a big one if he can go through, like, walkthroughs and stuff like that. They play tomorrow night. So so he's on a short week, has mm-hmm. a brand-new quarterback coming in. I would be – the only the only player I would even feel comfortable starting would be Eckler from that squad. Um, that's scary. I, I, think, I think the Chargers are going to have a hard time putting points on the board. Yeah. I, I think the, the only reason I can't bench Keenan Allen – is because he just gets so much volume in that offense, and especially with a new quarterback, you're going to want a veteran guy to go to. Another stat that you look into, uh, Las Vegas is 
pretty good against wide receivers if you look at their uh, statistics, but they're very bad at covering uh, intermediate like slot routes, which is exactly where Keenan Allen excels. They don't give up a lot of big plays, but they'll give up a lot of underneath stuff. Plus, because of Max Crosby, they get a lot of pressure. So quarterbacks have to get it out quick. And with a rookie quarterback with not too many reps, he's going to want to get it out quick anyway. Yeah. So Keenan Allen could just have one of those Keenan Allen, Allen volume games where he gets 10 catches or something, and he gets you points that way because we're in a PPR league. Again, if he's healthy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If he's not healthy, obviously, I, I would be very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but Sammy doesn't have too many other options. I mean, he has a bunch of running backs that he could choose. Maybe he tries to pick somebody up off of waivers. Um, but yeah, he, he might be in a pickle if Keenan Allen is ruled out by some chance. So scary times, not a good time to uh, be dealing with that stuff. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at the standings to see where everybody finalized. We kind of talked about it. Um, Marie got the number one seed. She'll be playing against Becky in the first round. And then we have Ian versus Tracy, me and Malik, the views from the sidelines, uh, debate. And then Sammy mm -hmm. versus uh, Joe, the two in the seven seed. So let's go right into the first matchup of Marie and Becky. Uh, right now, Marie is projected uh, 114. Becky is projected 106. And I think for the most part, everybody looks like they've set their lineups in this one. It seems like Becky's just going to stick with Tua and Tyreek. Maybe we'll ask her after the show if she's got any debate about it. Um, but like I said, they're going against the Jets. It could be a tough one. Um, Marie has some pretty good matchups uh, for herself. Like I said, Derrick Henry going against Houston. Uh, DK Metcalf going against Philadelphia. They've been very vulnerable in their secondary, even though they have Darius Slay and others. Um, they've struggled. And then Dak Prescott against Buffalo, like that could be a shootout. So Dak Prescott might have another one of those big games that he's been having. Um, and then Amari Cooper and Cortland Sutton, they seem to just, I don't, they don't look exciting when you see them on your, your roster, but they've been producing. And it seems like Cleveland with Joe Flacco's played pretty well. And Cortland Sutton gets in the end zone almost every week. Um, oh, Becky did decide to go with Joe Mixon. It looks like. Oh, yeah, there he is. And she has DeAndre Swift still in her lineup against Seattle. I think uh, probably based on matchup because Seattle's vulnerable to the run. So right now she's sitting Tony Pollard. How do you feel about that? Well, you know how I feel about Pollard. Oh, yeah, he's technically he's dead to you. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Um, I don't know. I mean, he, he has scored TDs, so, you know – if I had him on my roster right now, I think I would have him in the starting lineup just because he uh, gets those goal line carries, it seems. But I, I'm glad I don't have to deal with him because he's been, for me, uh, a big disappointment in, in the other league that I was in. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's got Swift. She's got Mixon. Uh, the nice thing about Swift, and, and you know, this is one of those you know, fantasy, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it, no basis in fact, but having Swift going on Monday night gives yeah. you that chance. Like yeah. if you're down by 10 points come Monday, mm -hmm. you know you got Swift going, which yeah. gives you a chance. So The other problem is Marie has DK Metcalf on Monday night. Ooh. Oh, so, so they're going to be going against each other. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Metcalf was fiery last weekend man slamming his helmet down and stuff yeah. like that i wonder what the dynamics are like over there in seattle because uh he was angry last weekend yeah he got he got into a fight and got ejected too so yeah should be interesting um all right let's go to tracy and ian and this is the one that i wanted to talk about because tracy made some interesting decisions um i think i agree with most of them and then ian has a big decision to make oh man he is without justin herbert and he has no other quarterbacks on his roster. Done for the season. Yep. The waiver wire has taken place on Wednesday. We're mm -hmm. recording this on Wednesday, which means any desirable quarterbacks like Stafford yep. has been snatched up. So he's basically going to have to look at the scraps on the waiver wire. And yeah. the, the quarterback position is not where you want to start what's left on the waiver wire. I'm really yeah. surprised he didn't have a backup uh, yeah. waiting to go in because Herbert's done for the season from what yeah. I hear. 
So this is the only waiver wire talk that we'll do this week just because I think it's interesting. Tracy dropped Jared Goff, and Ian has a Monroe St. Brown. Mm. The Lions are at home. I know they've been struggling lately, especially Jared Goff. Maybe he goes to Jared Goff for that stack um, and get him the playoff win. How, like, how terrible would that feel for Tracy to lose to Jared Goff? <laughs> you know, I might do it just for that reason. Now, the other league that we're in, you can't pick up a, a same week drop. Is yeah. is our league not set up like that? No, Can he so, pick them up right so away? he'll go through waivers for a couple days. So, like, they when they get dropped, somebody can pick them up. It, it goes through another waiver. So you can see on December 16th, he'll open back up to free agency. Mm -hmm. So people can put in claims for Jared Goff, and then December 16th, if nobody's claimed him, he'll be a free agent, and you can pick him up before wow. the games start. Um, otherwise, your options are Baker Mayfield. Maybe because it could be a shootout potentially. I don't know. Green Bay's defense isn't bad. Um, Geno Smith, he they haven't ruled him in or out yet for that game, so there's a chance he might be decent. And then everything else is kind of – you don't feel great about it. So Ian's going to have to make a decision. It'll be interesting to see what he's going to do. Um, and then Tracy decided to sit TJ Hawkinson. Huh. Now, for me, this is awkward, but I, I get it because she has Rasheed Rice, who's been very good for the uh, Chiefs lately, Devontae Adams, who's just very consistent, and Brandon Ayuk, who brings up a lot of um, touchdowns, a lot of yardage lately. But the hard part for her, Sam Laporta, she's playing, even though she just dropped Jared Goff. So that logic to me is a little off. But Denver is the second worst team against tight ends. Yeah. However... The only team worse against tight ends, Cincinnati. Mm. So she has the top two projected tight end options, and now she oh. decides to not play her two tight ends. Yeah, if there was ever a week to start a tight end in your flex spot, this might be it. Mm -hmm. But Ayuk is on a team that is on fire right now. So yeah. uh, KC with Rasheed Rice, they're facing New England, who, you know, one of the worst teams in the league right now. But their defense is good. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that's the only thing that makes me nervous. Yeah, they lost to the Chargers, but they did hold them to six points. So Right. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, benching Hawkinson, who is one of the, what, top three tight ends in the league right now? Yeah. I don't know, Tracy. I know she listens to this podcast. <laughs> you might want to rethink that. This, but. this could definitely be, and I know she's already kind of talked about it. It feel, She feels like she's in the situation where whoever she sits is going to go off. <laughs> and I could see that in every scenario. So don't exactly listen to what we say. But Now, she might be using the same logic that I'm using in, in benching Addison, that uh, the quarterback situation in Minnesota is not good right now. Yeah. So maybe that's the logic she's using. But... Mm -hmm. Like you said, you know, a, a new inexperienced quarterback is going to want to have that quick checkoff guy, right. and Hawkinson is notorious for that. Yeah. The, you know, over the middle uh, crossing routes or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so he might be the quarterback safety blanket. So yeah. who knows? Right. And plus, if she picked up Jake Browning thinking that they're going to, I, I would assume she thinks they're going to win this game. So. In that logic, and maybe we're getting too deep in the weeds, Jake Browning is going to score for Cincinnati. He's going to push the score up, which means Minnesota's going to be behind. They're going to have to throw more. And again, they're going to have to use that check down option of TJ Hawkinson. Mm. That's how my brain works. But maybe I've gotten into trouble by thinking too hard sometimes. So yeah, take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, the rest of Ian's team, Eckler, like you said, he might be a decent option for Vegas. Eckler just hasn't looked like himself, though, lately. He scored a touchdown last week. Um, he looked okay, mm -hmm. uh, but I think with the uh, with the new quarterback coming in, I think they're going to depend heavily on Eckler. So he might see a lot of volume this week. Yeah. Um, one last thing. This oh no, never mind. I was going to say uh, Tracy has some Saturday guys. I was going to say like she could wait to see for like Hawkinson or something, but no, he plays one o'clock on Saturday. So you can't really do that kind of waiting game thing that you yeah. might be able to. Uh, Ian has guys all over the place. He's got a Monday nighter uh, with Devontae Smith. Austin Eckler will give him an early game along with Devontae Adams. So you can kind of gauge your team right away 
and figure out if you need a big play or not. Um, but it looks like Ian's lineup is pretty much set um, besides Justin Herbert. So should be interesting. His When he gets a quarterback, their projections are going to be almost identical, I would yeah. think. So that could be a, a big matchup to watch out for. I, I just can't imagine heading into the first round of the playoffs with this quarterback situation. That's terrible, terrible timing to lose yeah. for, uh, Herbert for the season. Yeah, it's awful. Um, all right, let's go to me and Malik, and then we'll go to the – the matchup of the week for playoffs. <laughs> um, I'm projected ahead of Malik right now. Um, I told him to set his lineup because I think he should start Josh Allen over Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Trevor Lawrence still kind of banged up and against Baltimore defense. I don't know if I'd trust it, but uh, we'll see what he does. But Allen's facing that Dallas defense. who I mean, They've been up and down, but mm -hmm. man, they're still the Dallas defense. I, if, if I'm not mistaken, they're the number one defense in fantasy right now. So yeah. Ugh, I just man. think I, I think that Buffalo can just hang with everybody, but I that's just me. That's my personal bias. It's tough to give your opponent advice because yeah. it could blow up in your face. Right? <laughs> like I want I want you to play your best lineup, but at the same time, like I don't know if you think something's better, you you just go for it. Um, like I said, I decided I'm going all in the Rams. I this is my lineup. I'm not changing it. I did pick up Isaiah Likely. Uh, Pat Fryermuth has just not been working out, and I mm -hmm. like that I'll have a Sunday night player. The other fun thing for me is a lot of uh, Malik's guys are going to be a little bit earlier. I have with all the Rams guys, I have like all the afternoon slates for the most part, so I can kind of see how his team is formulating and go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, my only tough decision was whether I'm going to play Kansas City's defense or San Francisco's defense. Kansas City playing against New England, who is awful. And San Francisco playing against Arizona, who is also awful. Yeah. Um, so now, even though New England beat the Steelers last week, the week before they were shut out. Right. So I don't know. I probably would go with KC. Yeah, and that's who I have right now. Yeah. Um, just because I think Arizona at times looks okay, um, and I think Kansas City can get a lot more sacks on New England, and that's kind of just what I'm going off of. Yeah. So should be interesting. Uh, the other question Malik has is Isaiah Pacheco, whether he's going to be healthy enough to go against New England or not, that will be kind of his only lineup uh, choice, uh, in my opinion, besides the quarterback thing, whatever he wants to do for his quarterback. Yeah, there's a big red Q next to Chase, big red Q next to Pacheco. Uh, he's got two empty slots on his bench, so it's kind of slim pickings on his bench. Boy, uh, Najoku had a monster, monster game last yeah. week. But do you start him over Kittle? I don't think so. Uh, Kittle right. looks fantastic. So. Yeah, it, it's hard to to sit Kittle in that scenario. And uh, that's the tight ends that I wouldn't want to play both right. in that scenario. All right. We've made it. Sammy versus Joe. <laughs> Sammy had a lot of trash talk uh, last night at the basketball game that I went to. He, he's not. He's not afraid. <laughs> He's not scared, and right now he's projected 123 points to your 113. But as we've seen the last couple of weeks, you have outperformed your projections each and every week for, what is it, four weeks, I think? Well, I'm on a three-game win streak okay. right now. That's the longest win streak in our league. So mm -hmm. Sammy does have reason to be nervous. Yeah. Um, but like I said, he's beaten me twice during the regular season, so uh, facing him does make me a little nervous. Uh, but, uh, like I said, my team is on fire right now. Both him and I have been playing a chess match with our defenses. <laughs> we both stream defenses on a weekly basis. Him, I'm sure more than me, he has like 50 waiver wire moves to yeah. my 20 or so. Mm -hmm. Um, I did pick up the Browns defense, uh, on waivers, but then I started thinking about it and... Even though Denver, well, I, I dropped the Browns, picked up Denver instead. Yeah. They're playing Detroit this week, and I hate to go against the Lions, but Goff has not been playing well, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a chance for multiple turnovers for Denver's defense. But I'm actually, I may ride with Denver over the next several weeks if I'm lucky enough to advance mm -hmm. because their schedule is very, very good. Yeah. Uh, I think they're playing New England next week, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, so I might just leave Denver in. If I advance this week, I'll leave them in the rest of the playoffs. 
Um, and so the logic behind Sammy picking up Cincy, is, again, goes to that Minnesota quarterback situation that the Bengals are looking at an inexperienced quarterback uh, against Minnesota. So I, I, I see the logic there, why Sammy picked up Cincy and mm-hmm. is starting them. So like I said, this is a, a chess match, and it'd be interesting to see if that's what it comes down to, which defense is going to put up the most points. I think this is going to be a tight race. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have – I don't see anyone on Monday on you my have, You have OBJ on Sunday night. So he'll Sunday be, night. He'll be your last guy. And then he has <laughs> AJ Philly going on Monday. Yeah, Jalen Hurts and AJ uh, Brown on Monday night. So you're going to have to have like a 50-point lead to feel comfortable. Man. And 50 probably wouldn't feel comfortable, to be honest. Jeez, do I want to sit at home or do I want to go to like <laughs> BW3s and watch that? Yeah. That'd be kind of fun to sit there with Sammy at BW3s and, and watch the game. <laughs> yeah. they probably ask us to leave. Can right. you guys keep it down over there? Right. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's going to be a really close match. I'm not making any promises. I'm not uh, making any trash talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be a close game, and it will be settled probably in the fourth quarter of the Monday night game. Yeah is when this game is going to be decided. I think the other fun part for both of you guys is you guys have, like, Sammy has Keenan Allen on Thursday. You guys both have Denver and Detroit players going on Saturday. Sammy has Michael Pittman going on the Saturday game. You guys got a couple Sunday 1 o'clock, a couple Sunday afternoons. Like, you guys have a game going on throughout the whole weekend, I think. Yeah. At every time slot, basically. For um, me, it's it's going to come down to San Francisco. If if Purdy and uh, and Debo have their chemistry going this weekend, it, it's yeah. I'm going to be really really happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they have any reason to stumble against Arizona, then I'm toast. Yeah, yeah. Th- I think this is the the matchup that I'm I'm most excited for personally, um, just because of the talking, the bragging rights behind it will be fun for sure. Um, alrighty. So this is week 15. This is the playoffs. This is when it gets uh, nerve-wracking. Everybody make your uh, your final waiver moves. Good luck to everybody. And uh, we'll see which four teams make it through to the semifinals. Joe, you got any final thoughts? Just uh, I want to be one of the final four. Uh, it is going to be tough. And uh, we'll see if there's any upsets this weekend. Will the, will the top-seeded teams advance? Or will there be an upset this week? Yeah. And maybe we'll try to get in some of the people that advance next week on the podcast or the people that are eliminated so they can <laughs> shed their tears <laughs> and talk about their disgruntlements. All righty. We'll see you guys next week and good luck.